Everybody and Merry Christmas. Yes. We're Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And this is the day when I was a little boy. Yeah. Oh, Christmas Eve was big. Big day. Yeah. Oh, it was big. And um, that was, we opened our presents on Christmas Eve instead of Christmas Day. And it was just a big thing at our house. Well, your mother continued that God. throughout her lifetime. Yes, she did. She always had huge Christmas oh, trees. We, Christmas, was beautiful just, things. Christmas was just overwhelming yeah. in our house. Father, and we thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, Lord, for being so good. We give good. you praise and honor for loving us so, giving yourself to us, giving yourself for us. Thank and we Jesus. thank you with all of our hearts. We open our hearts and minds today to receive revelation from heaven, and we give you praise Thank and you, honor and glory in the name, in the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 10. And uh, remember the word Christ is a Greek word that was used to translate the Hebrew word Messiah. The Hebrew word Messiah means the anointed or the anointing. And then, of course, the word Christ is a direct translation of that word. And it, it means exactly the same thing in Hebrew. It means exactly the same thing in Greek. And it means exactly the same thing in the English language. Now, for some reason or other, through a lack of translating that word into the English Bible, English-speaking people read the word Christ as far as they knew. That's just Jesus' name. I mean, it didn't, it, it didn't register as anything. Christening, Christmas, mm -hmm. Christ, Christian, and actually... I mean, it's at the heart of the whole thing. But by uh, not, not having a, a renewed mind to that, then like so many other things have been done throughout the centuries, particularly in religion, the meaning of the thing is just almost boiled away. It's like taking a full pot of water and just boil it until there's nothing left. The word grace, just huge in the heart and mind of God. Yes, grace is God's overwhelming desire to treat us like sin had never Praise happened. God. That's what Jesus came to do. And um, it got boiled down to something you say over a meal <laughs> and, and didn't mean anything there. Well, we just say grace. Well, you know, da-da-da. The word blessing. I mean, the blessing was what the whole thing is all about. That's right. It got boiled down to a sneeze. Well, the word Christ was treated that way. And uh, it, you, you just really need to go through the whole New Testament. And every time you see the word Christ, you stop, you translate it, and you meditate it. Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing. Then you meditate that very verse and see whether or not it's majoring on Jesus himself or the anointing. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No, that's not the, what that verse says. That's where everybody quotes it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Makes all the difference once you translate it. I can do all things through the anointing which strengthens me. Amen. A lot of verses are referring to both him and his anointing. But we are the body of Christ. Yes. We're the body of that power. Hallelujah. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's read here. Isaiah 10, verse 27. It shall come to pass. Now notice that phrase. You, you need to mark that. It shall come to pass in that day his burden, his meaning the devil's burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder 
and his yoke from off your neck. And the yoke, and the yoke that's being referred to here in other places is called a yoke of iron. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now, that destroying that iron, it doesn't break the yoke. If you break it, uh, an iron yoke, you could put it back together, weld it back together or something. But once it's destroyed, like for instance, um, rust. Mm -hmm. Rust on iron or steel will eventually turn it to powder. Corrosion on aluminum turns it into a, a white powder. And when an airplane mechanic's looking in an airplane wing and he sees some of this white powder, boy, I mean, he gets nervous because that stuff's eating away at the wing structure in there and it can eat it away where it's, no, it's not fit to use anymore to break and you can't put it back together. It'll just turn to dust. Now, this is what the anointing is designed to do on yokes and burdens. Mm. So say this, the anointing. The anointing. The burden removing. The burden removing. Yoke destroying power. Yoke destroying power. Of Almighty God. Of Almighty God. Now then, let's go over to the book of Luke's gospel. And look at Jesus' first message, his primary message throughout his entire time on the earth. He preached this everywhere he went. We see it over in the book of Acts. We won't turn there right now, but the, the apostle Peter pointed this out, that he published throughout all Judea how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who, Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing, healing all, all that were oppressed of the devil. Praise God. So can you see the anointing? who anointed him with the Holy Ghost. Now, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? Galatians 3, 8. The scripture foreseeing that God would justify or make righteous the heathen by faith, preach the gospel unto Abraham saying, in you shall all nations be blessed. Amen. The blessing of the Glory Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Now, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the blessing to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He sent me to preach deliverance to the captive, to preach recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The anointing is on me, and I'm here, he said. All right, what does this have to do with Christmas? Everything. It's what Christmas has to do with this. That's right, that's right. Now back up to the second chapter of the book of Luke. Oh my, glory to God. I'm telling you, I done preach myself happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now notice this, in the second chapter of Luke, in, in uh, verse seven, she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, not because they were broke and couldn't afford anything but a, but a sheep stall, but because there was no room for them in the inn. They were not poor, broke people. There were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. The angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Now, you remember, glory, the glory of the Lord manifested in a fire at night uh, all mm -hmm. through the wilderness, a pillar of fire at night and a pillar of cloud in the daytime right. going before and behind the nation of Israel, protecting them, feeding them, caring for them in every way. 
Praise God. The, and the, the prophet saw the Spirit of God sitting on the throne and he was a fire from the loins up mm. and a fire from the loins yes. down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what happened out there on that hillside that day. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. No, no, whoa, whoa. Put the brakes on right there. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior Praise which Jesus. is anointed of the Lord. Can you see now what he said? Can you see what those shepherds heard? Yes. They didn't hear a word they didn't understand. They didn't hear uh, a, a, a word in a foreign language identifying this baby. They heard anointed. And the angels heard it. They went wild, didn't they? Well, the angel, yeah. The angel of the Lord said this, and, and he brought this message, there is born unto you a Savior. Well, what kind of Savior, sir? A Savior which is anointed of the Lord. Whoa. Praise God. Now, this shall be a sign unto you you'll find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts Hallelujah. praising God and saying, they just exploded, saying, glory to God in the highest mm. on earth, peace, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Whoa, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord yeah. has made known Glory unto to us. God. Now the angels absolutely exploded on that hillside. They, they just, it, 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 they just uh, <clears throat> could not contain what had just happened. They knew it was the beginning of the end oh, of oh, Satan's reign. Sin and everything right. else in the earth. It was over. The curse. And we're not talking, look now, we're not talking about it being over at the end of another 2,000 years. It was over then and heaven knew it. We've had authority over this whole thing. We, and, 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 and it got stolen from us through religious ideas and all that kind of thing. But nevertheless, not God's fault. Mm -hmm. He put it in us and he put it on us. And we've got a people in the Praise earth now Jesus. that have awakened to it. Yes. And <laughs> I'm telling you, the devil's Ooh. in trouble and he knows it big time. For the last 50 years, God has been building a people well, actually, a little more than that. The last, um, really, since the turn of the 20th century. But it's been developed to a, a much higher degree in, in the last 50 to 60 years here where he has developed a people that have learned how to live by faith, Glory as the Scripture states. We've learned how to live independently of this world's Babylonian socialistic system. We've learned how to receive our needs met and all things added to us through the anointing, through the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added to you. He has now in place a people prepared and preparing that he can hand over this economy into their hands. Praise God. We are there. We are just now ready for this to happen. Praise and Jesus. the moment that he deems ready and true, 
He will transfer it into our hands. And there ain't nothing the devil can do about it. There ain't wow. nothing the world can do about it. And there ain't nothing the world's system. They can vote till they turn green and they cannot stop God from transferring his property into the hands of his people. Glory to God. And we're in the, we're in the, the days of that, um, that wealth and land and anointing transfer right now. Now that's a Christmas gift. That's Christmas. Ooh, Jesus. And that's what this was all about. Jesus. Was Jesus. to get his land back and get his get this planet back. Jesus has owned it since yes. the day he was raised from the that's dead. Right. That's Amen. right. Amen. Now let's take a look here at what they said. Peace on earth. Good will toward men. Now he's not he's not talking about peace on earth like, oh, all the wars are gonna stop. That's the eventual results of it. But that's not what they that, that's not what they were just going wild about. They were going about peace on earth from heaven. Good will, not among men, good will toward men. Goodwill from God. They say God has declared peace. Sin is broken. Oh yeah, the curse. The, the, yeah, the, see, the one that would be made a curse for us and destroy yeah. the curse of the law, destroy the power of hell, destroy the power of the devil. So that when sin does abound, grace could much more abound. Amen. Had just been born in this earth, and there was no way the devil could get it's him out. It's been done. It was done, as far as God's concerned. That's right. And, and so he was say he declared peace between heaven and earth. That's what this is so big about. That's what the peace angels just went. Peace on earth, good will. Toward men. Blessing, in other words. Absolutely. Blessing toward men. And she, God, God is saying, look, uh, I ain't mad at you. People still have the idea that God's mad. No, 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 no. We're, we're, let's go back over there to the book of Isaiah for a moment where God was prophesying of this. Now, you see, when a prophet spoke in days of old, he was quoting God who calls things that be not as though they were. That's what prophetic utterance That's is. Right. And the dominating power of the Word of God is released in the earth. It dominates time. It dominates the present and the future. It dominates the atmosphere. It, uh, uh, no man can change it. Now, you can change whether or not you benefit from it. Yes, that's right. But once he's spoken it, it's coming to pass. Now notice it's what... It's available. It, yeah, oh, yeah. Now, he, he, he did that in Isaiah 53 concerning Jesus being on the cross. But now you come over here into Isaiah 54, which is God calling the body of Christ, the body of the anointing, the body of the anointed one, in 53, he went to the cross, raised from the dead, and in 54, God is calling the, the future body of Christ into existence. Now listen what he said in the eighth verse. In a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, that's the Praise Hebrew God. word hesed, which is covenant commitment. Will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, your Redeemer. Who? Your Redeemer. Redeemer. The Redeemer is speaking here. This is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, are we ever going to have another flood that destroys the no, earth? No, not ever. No, sir. The rainbow covenant is in place. That ain't going to happen. Well, now this ain't going to happen either. Now listen. Mm. This is as the waters of Noah unto me, as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn. 
This is a blood sworn mm -hmm. oath in the blood of Jesus. So have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee, for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my covenant commitment shall not depart from you, and neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that has mercy on you. He's not Praise mad anymore. God. Hallelujah. What good news. Glory be to God. No wonder they were shouting and screaming and going all over the place. They still are. Every time one soul gets born again, heaven just erupts just like Praise they did out God. there that day. That's what this was all about. Amen. That's the reason we are to celebrate yes. Christ Mass. Mass is celebration. So you have anointed one anointing here burden removing, yoke destroying, peace from God, heaven on earth. God's never wroth again, will never rebuke us again. His total grace is in place. He loves you with all of his heart, all of his soul, all of his mind, and all of his strength. And he's given himself for us. He's given himself yeah. to us. We're supposed to be celebrating. We're supposed to be just going completely berserk over this. And I'm about to right has now. Been destroyed. The curse is gone. For anybody that will receive Jesus as the Lord of their lives. He was made the curse for us. That's right. He broke it forever. Glory to God. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas Woo. from Amen. God to us. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what the no giving... No wonder the angels went wild. They knew. Yeah. They sang. This ain't no time to get out and go crazy and go mm -hmm. drunk on, get drunk oh, on, my on word, wine. No. So get drunk on this. Woo. Glory to God. I mean, this is what families are supposed to be giving presents about. Yes. This is God giving us the anointing, the blessing Holy of the God. Lord. It maketh rich, and he has no sorrow with it. He bore no our sorrow. sorrows. Isn't that wonderful? No sorrow. No grief. No grief. No death. No death. No sin. No sin. It's broken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Merry Good. Christmas, Good everybody. Job, Glory, and I'll be back in just a moment. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want you to have the best in 2013. They'd like to give you a gift that reminds you of all that God has promised to be yours by His grace through your faith. Included within the pages of the 2013 KCM calendar are personal quotes from Kenneth and Gloria to encourage you and a daily Bible reading plan. Spend time in the Word every day in 2013 and hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to you. Every day with God is a day to be noted. You can use this calendar to keep track of all the Lord is doing in your life day after day. Have a very Merry Christmas and a most wonderful new year. Expect it to be a great year full of God's best for you. Merry Christmas from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. To receive your Christmas gift, go to our website, kcm.org. The 2013 KCM calendar is a great way to help you stay in God's Word all year long. There are scriptures, encouraging words of faith, a daily Bible reading plan, and more. Expect 2013 to be a great year full of God's best for you. Request your free KCM calendar today. One per household, please. Offer good for 30 days. I want to talk to you about this gift that I'd like to send you. I, I know, you know, everybody gets a lot of calendars, and they're wonderful. I, I've, I like my calendars. Me and too. Some of them I like better than I do others and all of that. This one has definite purpose. You hear about the gift that keeps giving. This is one of those kind of gifts, and here's what's important about it. Nobody can live the life of faith without a daily feeding of your spirit. You don't expect your body to function without feeding it every day. God created the human uh, body to be nourished. 
He created every living thing to need nourishment. Then he created that nourishment and put it mm -hmm. in the earth for yes. us. Mm -hmm. You change that the nourishment that he put here for you and it, it affects your health in an adverse way. The same thing is true of your mind, your will, your emotions, the, the mental part of you. The same thing is true of the spiritual part of you. He gave us where we're, we, it's vitally necessary that our spirits nourish on faith and on the Word of God. Now, if you change what He gave us to nourish our spirits with, you get religion and, and, and you get powerless. So now here's the, here's the key to this calendar. Um, every day marks your Bible reading. You start on New Year's Day and Genesis 1, 1, and then Matthew 1, 1 and 2. Oh. And then you go each day, your Bible reading is there. That's good. And you get to the end of the year, you've read through the entire Bible. You've used it in your prayer time and Praise in your word God. time every day. I That's can awesome. promise you <clears throat> this will feed your spirit, man. You start here, mm. by the time you get here, you're going to be chewing nails and drinking gunpowder soup, brother. I'm telling you, because this is, that, that's what this is for, and it, it will accomplish it if you'll act on it and yeah. use it. Amen. Go to kcm.org, and all the information and so forth is there. Father, we thank, thank you. you. We Lord. pray for this radio and television mm. audience on this Christmas Eve. And, oh, Father, all of those throughout the earth that are crying out to you tonight, I'm asking you for special manifestations yes, just like on oh, that mercy, Christmas mercy. day, Thank a special you, manifestation of your glory, mm. a special manifestation of your presence throughout the earth. Heal them and raise them up in Jesus' name. Jesus. Oh, we love you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Till then, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland reminding you again, Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For this week's broadcasts on DVD or CD, today's product offer, or for more information on Kenneth Copeland Ministries, visit our website at kcm.org. Tomorrow on the Believer's Voice of Victory. When you take God's Word, And which is filled with his faith. And you put it in your heart. And then you speak it with faith. Then his word will dominate your life and stay right out in front of you, expanding the Garden of Eden wherever you go.